Hi, it's Social from Krishna Talk. Today I'm going to be talking about colors. So, when you think of colors, there are so many different colors. Like, maybe when, you, when I say colors, you'll think of blue, maybe yellow, maybe green, maybe red. There are so many colors out there. And it's hard to just start off with one and explaining the whole color system. But there are some easier ways to explain all the colors. And then I'll explain how we see color. First, let's talk about our primary colors. Our primary colors are blue, yellow, and red. Primary colors that are blue, yellow, and red are, one, are colors that cannot be made. Specifically, blue is cyan, yellow is basically yellow, and red is just red. So these three colors, cyan or blue, or yellow and then red these all cannot be made from other colors like orange black and stuff like that so that make them primary colors how about let's add those three primary colors into the wheel now let's now let's mix all three of them but not all together two and then two and then two okay ready now let's mix blue or cyan with yellow these two like cyan or blue plus yellow equals green so blue plus yellow equals green and next red plus blue red plus cyan or blue equals purple so we already got two of ours we know that green is a secondary color forgot to mention the word secondary. Secondary is the second type of colors that can be made but cannot be made with the other type of colors. So the secondary colors will be explained from we know it is green, we know there is purple that is red and one. But how about these other two colors that are missing their combination for the third mysterious secondary color? You might already know this, but the answer is actually kind of simple. You know, red, that like, you know, regular red, lots of red stuff, like apples. They're like that middle-ish brightness. Like, they're not so light and bright. Like, bright means it's more, there's more color into it. Light means it's more kind of transparent. So, light ones make sure kind of more darkish ones, brightish ones, would probably equal to something that's a medium range. So, let's tell yellow, that's a nice, kind of transparent color, and the bright red. So these two equal, you guessed it, orange. Orange is one of my favorite colors. In fact, my teacher loves orange. It's her favorite color. And it is a really joyful color for me because I love oranges and oranges are orange like how its name says it's an orange orange yeah yeah blah blah it's hard to explain that but it is explainable still okay now we know our secondary colors there are also thirdary colors now let's mix how about orange and purple this will re lead to purplish orange because you're basically mixing both this will probably equal to I guess violet orange violet or something like that because purple when it gets a bit light it'll actually become orange so you can do the same with all the other primary and secondary and thirdary colors and if you mix all of the thirdary colors it'll equal to black and you might think black is an unbeatable color. Whatever color you put into it, it'll not, it'll not overlap. Sometimes in drawing, in drawing tools it does that. But if you mix every color and you get black and you're trying to make a different color, that's bad. But if you want to restart, just put yellow on top of it because yellow can actually be black. But black can also be yellow if yellow is put in first and then black. But then yellow can also go over black, making it yellow again. So that is a cool trick to know if you're painting and you got black and you want to restart. Sometimes in paint it'll actually overlap, like acrylic paints. 
Okay, now how do we see colors? Like, you can see them under a tree. If you move, like, to a side, you'll see all these green leaves. And the green leaves, I can explain. But, look at this bark. What's different? Yes, it looks browny, but you can see the moss. Moss is green, but it's not the same shade of green. If, before talking about how we see color, I'll talk about shades. Shades are basically how uh, color gets lighter, more transparent, or brighter, more darker. So I guess the, leaf, the leaves I see over there, they're more bright. But this moss, this is more, it is, it's dull, but it's not bright because bright means it's light. It's light. It's like, it's like perfectly bright. It's like, you can see it. It's not dull. It's not, it does not have a shade of black. It has a shade of white instead. If you make it too bright, it can lead to the, pr the transparent lightish other stuff. Too bright equals too equals to lo, low light. So that's again basic color mat. And now let's talk about dull. Dull is a shade. Dull is a type of shade. I say those ones are yeah they're bright, but this is dull. The moss is dull. Where's something bright? Oh yeah, the grass down here. The grass down here is more light. They look pretty weird like the grass there and the grass here are not the same probably because this has lesser glass and that area has more glass or from this point of view like i'm over here if i'm there will probably look different two eyes have different points of view okay now let's talk about how we see colors so let's say uh, seeing this this like trunk over here how am i seeing it is brown well, most of the times, for except for bridge trees, beech trees, that when light comes, it'll it'll come against the bark of a tree, and then it'll reflect. You see, it absorbs every color except for brown, so it appears brown to us. It's about light reflecting. How about an apple? An apple when you're eating it, where there's light, it's red. Why is it red? The apple absorbs every color except for red. And you see those like like yellowish, pinkish, green patches around there? It's just about the thickness of the peel of the apple. That gives its color. This bark is thick, so it can absorb a lot of color. But it does not and it it, it does not have enough for brown. So brown just gets reflected and gives its color. The same, let's see, let's say the moss here, yeah, moss does not get its light, and it does not get its color from the light. Moss is pigmented. Pigmented means that it, light, if even if light comes in, it absorbs everything, nothing happens to it. It just stays green no matter what. Here's a good example, our skin. like. Pretend you're in a cold place. There'll be less pigment, so your skin becomes more whitish peach. But how about if it's super hot, like how it is here? It's gonna get more hotter in the summer, but it's already really hot, and I played outside for a long time. That's why my parents told I was getting tan. So yes, it does look like I was, my skin is darker than last time, and that's because of pigment. The pigment from the sun came onto my skin and the my skin cells metabolized it and it got darker but see it the, the skin only see if it's hot and sun so much pigment will be coming it can only metabolize a little so that means it'll get darker quicker but in light areas it, it, a little light will be coming so lesser pigment will be there and our skin can quickly metabolize it so it's totally perfect. Our skin will be nice and whitish. If it gets too whitish, that means you're starting to live in a colder area. But if it gets started to get darkish, then you're starting to live in a warmer area. That is something that is good to know. That's pigment that is not light. 
So not everything comes from light and not everything comes from pigment. So that's pretty cool too. Don't forget that metabolism is what's is when one of her like cells or stuff like that starts, starts to, to destroy it. So there's, I'm gonna do a next another video on chocolate, but um, why chocolate is not good for dogs? I'm not gonna explain it now, but like some brief thing is like there's something kind of like toxic for both like both us and dogs, but our human body quickly metabolizes metabolize it that toxin in chocolate so it goes away and it does no harm to us but the other sugars do harm to us not immediately but later on if you eat too much so don't eat too much chocolate i know it's delicious but i need to continue talking about colors because this video is not about chocolate okay color so i already explained the types of colors shades and how we see color how about color that already comes from light? So, colors that already come from light, you know, light usually reflects off. So then how does that get its color? Like, it's in the sky. No pigment can come in the sky. Well, actually, pigment sometimes does come in the sky. But, and sometimes light actually even reflects off the sky. The sunlight reflects off the sky up there, and the sky absorbs every color except for blue. And blue is how the sky looks like. And it changes in between the things. Like in the early morning, it's dark, and then it goes blue, and then it goes back. Sky is a different episode. It's a big topic. We need to do a lot of other videos. So don't think this is the last video. There are lots of stuff to do. Okay. Now, how about, like, colors can mean warnings. See, so if you look at blue, you can say, Oh, blue is such a nice color. Most blue things are actually not really blue. Most of them just come from light. But real blue stuff usually mean a sign of a warning. There, like, there's this flower that's blue, and if you smell it or touch it, you can die because it ha has a really big like toxin. So blue is a good warning. There's another example, there's this butterfly that's blue and it's a warning, don't come near it. Because if you touch it or if someone, or if an animal eats it, it tastes bad and it can kill you. Because the toxin in the blue dye will probably kill you. So, blue is a really dangerous color. Like, my shirt is blue. Yeah, my shirt is blue. But this, this is dye, but it's not the poison dye, not all blue is poisonous like the sky blue sky comes from light so it's anyways no problem if I die like there's so many ways to explain colors like I guess another dye type would be for it might be weird but actually dirt dirt actually will get is it's not reflectance I know it's wet but it will really absorb every color so it needs dye to get its color so yes it has pigments this wood chip down here this is a wood chip and it is dark because of the dirt around it the dirt the dirt will it kind of stain the wood chip the wood chip is supposed to be light brown but but the dirt stains it to give its color sometimes colors stain each other like pretend you're making a art art piece and then like there's um blue there's blue here and yellow here you know yellow is a hard um color like once you smudge something into it it's hard to remove it so pretend you were doing this and then you messed up when you're painting blue and eventually to yellow and that would be you would be sad right because you you ruined your masterpiece you need to start over but that's just how stains go. It's okay. That I, I one time I, when I was in art class that happened, but I was totally fine with it. It was it was actually a dark blue and a lighter blue. I mean, we were doing an art project that happened, but I just thought I was unique. So I guess it would be uh, the water was wavy and there was this this like big splash that happened.
I can say that. There's tons of things that would make it blurry. Like stuff like that. And there's a lot of fun things to do when you do a mistake. So mistakes are proof that you're trying. So that's it for this video. I hope you like this video. Bye bye.